काल पाए ब्रह्मा बप्प धरा काल पाए शिवजु अवत्रा काल पाए विष्णु प्रकाश सकल काल का किया तमाशा ही हैज कोटेड फ्रॉम द नित नेम द गुरु इज टेलिंग अस ब्रह्मा वॉज बॉर्न इन टाइम शिव एज वी पिक्चर डिपेक्ट एंड कंसेप्चुलाइज हिम टू वॉज बॉर्न इन टाइम एंड इवन विष्णु वॉज बॉर्न इन टाइम and all this is merely a play of time since it is a play of time it not only rises in time but will also be consumed away by time this is the final hit on the ego man loves to say i am ephemeral i am just a speck of dust that would be mercilessly rolled under the tide of time but my gods are eternal that's what the common man feels and therefore he prays to his gods he says oh my god of such color and nature save me oh my god of such persuasion and belief save me oh my god of such sect and creed fulfill my wishes so he does find something to hang on to he says oh i am time bound but i have come upon something timeless and what is it that man loves to call as timeless the gods of his creation so the ego even in its apparent show of humility is actually holding on to its undue arrogance what is the undue arrogance of the ego to assume and believe that it knows eternity even if in a remote way do you get this the ego says i might not be eternal but i know somebody who is eternal and who is eternal all my deities all my gods they are eternal and i have a connection with the eternal because i have a connection with my gods so i do have a claim on eternity i have at least an indirect approach to eternity i might not be able to touch eternity or immortality myself but i know someone who is immortal and who is he oh he is my god he is immortal and this small support is enough for the ego to not merely survive but actually thrive saints are saying nothing doing you are a time bound illusion evanescent and this entire universe of yours is evanescent and obviously the gods that you so fondly dream of are just things that rise and fall the same essence is conveyed equally succinctly and powerfully by kabir sahab i'll quote him sadho ye murdon ka gaon 
पीर मरे पैगंबर मरे हैं मरे हैं जिंदा जोगी राजा मरे हैं प्रजा मरे हैं मरे हैं वैद और रोगी साधो ये मुर्दों का गांव चंदा मरे हैं सूरज मरे हैं मरे हैं धरणी आकाशा चौदह भवन के चौधरी मरे हैं इन्हों की का आशा साधो ये मुर्दों का गांव नॉलिसन नॉलिसन केयरफुली नौहू मरे हैं दसहू मरे हैं मरे हैं सहज अट्ठासी तैतीस कोटि देवता मरे हैं बड़ी काल की बाजी नौहू मरे हैं दसहू मरे हैं मरे हैं सहज अट्ठासी तैतीस कोटि देवता मरे हैं बड़ी काल की बाजी साजधो ये मुर्दों का गांव एंड देन ही सेज नाम अनाम अनंत रहत है दूजा तत्व न कोई कहें कबीर सुनो भाई साधो भटक मरो मत कोई चंदा मरे हैं सूरज मरे हैं योर एंटायर यूनिवर्स विल गो डाउन योर एंटायर यूनिवर्स इज अ बबल तैतीस कोटि देवता मरे हैं दीज गॉड्स दैट आर यू सो दैट यू आर सो प्राउड ऑफ विल ऑल डिसअपियर इन द फ्लो ऑफ टाइम Hmm? badi kal ki baji it is the same kal that is being referred to in nitnem as well kal pae brahma bap dhara kal pae shivju avatra kal pae vishnu prakash sakal kal ka kiya tamasa kabir sahab says badi kal ki baji नितनेम से सकल काल का किया तमाशा द सेम थिंग तैतीस कोटि देवता मरी हैं कबीर साहब इज टॉकिंग ऑफ देयर डिसअपियरेंस नितनेम इज टॉकिंग ऑफ देयर अपियरेंस काल पाए ब्रह्मा बप धरा Nitnem says, "How the gods came into being? They came into being in the random flow of time." And Kabir Sahab is describing how the gods will appear. How will the gods appear? Disappear in the random flow of time. Nitnem says, "In the random flow of time, the gods appeared." Kabir Sahab is saying, "In the random flow of time, the gods will disappear." बड़ी काल की बाजी सकल काल का किया तमाशा आई गेटिंग इट नो यू आर आस्किंग वॉट इज दिस त्रिमूर्ति ब्रह्मा विष्णु महेश द त्रिमूर्ति इज सीक्रेड एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड first of all the trimurti that is referred to in brahma vishnu and mahesh is the trimurti that represents gods not god the truth because god is not three therefore when truth is to be pointed at it is said only shiv is the truth you will never hear the saints chanting i am vishnu or i am brahma but they will say shivoham shivoham shiv am i so the one truth that shiv refers to is the source of the trimurti the trinity 
and therefore a very careful and wise distinction has to be drawn between Shiv, the ultimate truth, and Mahesh, the one who is a part of Trimurti. They are not one. Are you getting it? When the formless non-dual truth is to be talked of, then we say Shiv. And when the various formed aspects of the truth are to be referred to, then we say Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Because where there is form, there is a beginning. All forms begin. Where there is a form, there is a time. Because all forms continue in time. And where there is form, there is an end. Because all forms end. So the three aspects of formation are the three names that you find in the Trinity. The truth is never ever formed nor does it ever cease to be. Therefore truth is one. It cannot have three aspects. But the formed world, the world of names, shapes, colors and sizes has three aspects always. If you look at any formed object, you will be able to note down three things. One, it comes into being. You can note down when it came into being and how it came into being and the cause-effect relationship between the object and its predecessor. To the extent it is available to you to be known. And then you can also note down the length of time for which the object remains in existence. And then you can also note down the time at which the object disappears and the whole situation around its disappearance, the causing factors of its disappearance, the whole process of its disappearance. These three things are always available for observation. So it has been said that when the formless truth, when the formless truth Shiva or Atma or Brahm or Satya acts as the creator, then we will call him as Brahma. When the formless truth acts to maintain the creation the manager or the supervisor or the caretaker or the operator then we'll call him as Vishnu And when he seeks to dissolve the creation, then we will call him as Mahesh. So Shiva is the foundation. Truth is the foundation on which Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh play their respective parts. And they all play their respective parts in the world. 
देर फोर देयर बींग इज सिनोनिमस एंड देयर फोर को टर्मिनस विद द बींग ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सिनोनिमस को टर्मिनस को एग्जिस्टेंट विद द बींग ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड द वर्ल्ड इट सेल्फ वी नो is a projection of the projector that the little i is therefore those who have known have said what truth is there in your world you change your world changes is there any proof of this world except for your experience if the world itself is not reliable what to say of the agencies that are associated with the creation and the destruction of the world if a thing actually does not exist where was it created no where who created it nobody and if somebody says that fellow created it then that fellow actually does not exist for how long did that non existent thing exist for no period at all so who was maintaining and operating it well actually nobody and who destroyed the thing that did not exist at all well nobody therefore the nit name is wisely telling you that the ones that you worship as the causing maintaining and destroying agencies of the world they too are just little figments in the stream of time they too don't really exist तैतीस कोटि देवता मरे हैं कबीर साहब इज सो स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड ही डज नॉट लीव एनी थिंग फॉर योर इमेजिनेशन ही डज नॉट लीव इट टू यू टू कंक्लूड दैट द गॉड्स आर फेक ही पुट्स इट ब्लंटली ऑन योर फेस तैतीस कोटि देवता मरे हैं जस्ट एज यू विल डाई योर गॉड्स विल ऑल्सो डाई सो यू बेटर stop believing that you have some kind of connection with eternity you better stop believing that you have a mole in god's house god's house does not admit any moles are you getting it there is only one way to reach there the super highway there is no back door entry allowed there you cannot bribe one of your petty gods and gain indirect entry indirect entrance in his house have a direct intimate heartfelt relationship with the truth and that is the only way to get him or be gotten by him so abhilash if you are someone who believes very much in the world if you are someone who takes the world as important meaningful and true then for you is the trinity because if the world is there then the trinity is significant what does the trinity signify the world itself so then the trinity is very sacred if you are someone who who oh, believes that the world is true the world is important then you will worship the trinity you will say oh brahma so very venerable he gave rise to the world oh vishnu he is running it on a second by second basis my obeisance 
O oh, Mahesh, he can destroy the world any time. I salute him. Such things are only for those who first of all believe that the world has any substance to it. Such things are only for those who have a lot of attachment to the world, who have a lot at stake in the world. Then for you are multiple gods, not merely three, but as Kabir Sahib says, 33 crores, that is Koti. Because you will not stop at three. Once counting begins, how can it stop? Either you don't begin counting or you will keep counting. How can you start counting and stop at three? It is impossible. That is Koti. India knew this thing. He said, what's the point? Either truth is Advait or let's have millions of gods. Either there would be not even one Advait or let there be millions. There can be no in-between thing. You cannot say, oh, the gods are precisely 8.21 in number. Either not even one or millions, countless. So it depends on who you are. If you have a very fond association with the world, then worship as many gods as possible. What are the names of those gods? Well, not merely Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh or Indra, Agni, Varun or Marut. I'll tell you the names of your millions of gods. Power, prestige, lust, market, your employer, police, money, beliefs, your husband, your wife, the movie maker, the joker, the shopkeeper, the bull on the road, tasty food. All these are our gods. Who is a god? The one you bow down to. Look at the daily life of the common man. Is he not bowing down daily to all these? So that's the punishment of the one who will believe too much in the world. He will have a million gods. You believe in the world and every small part of the world will become a god in front of you demanding your surrender. And you will have no option but to submit. But to the ones who value the truth more than they value their body, their life, their world, there is but one non-dual Advait truth. Some call that truth by the name Shiva. Chidananda Rupa. Shivoham, Shivoham. How are you to be known by the gods you worship? How to know myself, sir? Who am I? It's very easy, son. Just look at the gods you worship. The gods you worship will tell you who you are. If you are bowing down your head at multiple places, that will tell you who you are. If your head refuses to bow down except in front of the one, then again you know who you are. Know yourself by the gods you bow down to.
Yes, 